The Google walkouts are shining a spotlight on how the tech giants treats women. Thousands of employees left work yesterday to protest revelations in the New York Times that Google protected three executives accused of sexual misconduct and paid large severances to two of them. One of those executives, Andy Ruman, denied the claims made against him. He says this, the New York Times story contains numerous inaccuracies about my employment at Google and wild exaggerations about my compensation. Now, this is the latest protest in the year of the Me Too movement. The nationwide action also led to the creation of Time's Up, an organization that insists on safe, fair, and dignified work for women of all kinds. Lisa Borders is Time's Up first president and CEO. Her first day on the job was yesterday. She previously served as president of the WNBA. Good morning to you, Lisa Borders. Good morning, Gail. Great so, to be with you. We're glad you're here. So take us to your day yesterday. You wake up and you see these headlines. Are you thinking, I have work to do? What were you thinking? My first thought was if there were any questions about the decision I made to come to Time's Up and begin this work and join the folks who started this in January of last year, there was no question that the universe affirmed my decision. It's unfortunate, but I'm here to do the work. Let's get started. What did you think about Google's, Google's response and the fact that they're in this conversation this way? The first thing I thought was it was stunning that it was Google. You think of them as a tech giant. You think of them as being culturally relevant and resonant. You look at their doodles every morning and you think they keep it real mm -hmm. every day. So to see this walkout, this global protest against them was stunning. It is not surprising though when you think about corporate America and how many challenges we see in the boardroom and the mailroom with regard to women and how we are treated, not just in corporations, mm -hmm. but in every sector in every industry. So your first day was yesterday. Um, what does the to-do list look like? I mean, is it yeah. to fix and change things in the boardrooms? Is it to help companies that think, gosh, we, we just have no idea where to begin? Or to, uh, there's a whole huge legal side. Right. So, John, we cannot boil the ocean. We're going to work in three sectors. Culture, companies, and laws. This fits, the Google situation fits, frankly, in all three. Mm -hmm. We are delighted that the CEO spoke up yesterday. Mr. Pachai said, I agree with the workers. I agree with the women and the enlightened women who walked out yesterday and said, we have some issues to address women at Google. Women and men walked out. Yeah. Women yeah, and see. enlightened yes. men, that is for sure, all across the globe. So we applaud that. That's acknowledging the problem. The question now is, how are you going to address the problem? When I thought about the Google uh, team, if you will, the Google family, Family, they left notes on their desk as to where they were going, what they were doing, why they were protesting, and they left five issues on the table that they would like to see addressed. It was crisp, it was compelling, it was clear. The question now is, will the CEO and the board and the Google team take them seriously and respond, not react, respond? And one of those is pay transparency that we have up on the screen right now. You yes. say that is key for companies, especially for women, to see what others are making, to have salaries be made known so they can see whether or not they're underpaid. Bianca, you're absolutely correct. Transparency is key to opening up all of this, whether it's pay inequity or opportunity inequity. You shouldn't have to know what's going on. You should be able to see it plainly. The companies have an opportunity here, I think also an obligation. If you look at the data today, the diversity data that says when you have people of different backgrounds, experiences, skill sets, and talents working on any problem or anything that your company is working on, the results are better. This is not Lisa's opinion. If you look at the price earnings ratios in public companies, the return on investment, the data is clear. These companies have a fiduciary responsibility to their shareholders. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make the moral argument. May we start with the economic argument? But you've, you've also said, Lisa, that there's room for redemption. I think a lot of people People may be surprised to hear you say that. What does that look like? So anytime there's a crisis, Gail, we know that the formula is regret, reform, and restitution. Once you have walked through saying you're sorry, once you, and you really mean it, a sincere I'm sorry, then you talk about what you're going to do to fix it, and then how are you going to take full accountability? You need to be brought into the fold. You can be the best ally. If you have done something wrong and yeah. you are now walking in the light and see a better way and going to perform a better way, mm. you are in fact well, redeemed. Well, we are walking into a hard out. So Lisa, congratulations <laughs> on a busy first week. We appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Great to be with you.